Well, welcome back, yogis. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Ask Yama. I wanted to talk to you about something that has been on my mind since the day we started uh, Yama five years ago and something that I was recently asked in an interview for Sweat Equity Magazine. One of the things that they were asking me about is where do we see the industry going and what are some of the changes that are coming? Um, what can we expect more of as the years go by and as our industry continues to develop? And the first thing that came to mind for me is um, you know, this continued formalization of, of the industry. And basically, you know, we're going from being a fragmented mom and pop, beautiful, 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 successful industry to being something that's just going to happen on a larger scale. And some folks are a little bit scared of that of that scale and we're kind of in the like the mo yoga mo better mentality. You know, the more people that get the practice, the better. And in order to facilitate all of that growth, there has to be more structure. And so the first thing that comes to mind um, when I think about where the industry is going and I think about that formalization is actually what I'm going to call the C word. And the C word is not what you think it is. I hope you're not thinking what I think you might be thinking. But the C word is actually um, a contract. And going even back to, to you know five years ago when we started Yama, and, and historically speaking, we've gotten tons of flack over the years for um, insisting and, and really being instrumental in having a contractual agreement in place. Um, so today's conversation is really the importance of making clear agreements. Um, this happens in your life. You know, we think about it when you're, when you're getting married, when you're signing up for a school program, when you're buying a car. Um, you know, in every, every relationship that you have essentially is an agreement. And the clearer the agreement is, the happier all the parties are going to be. The first thing I think is that gets in our way of being comfortable with contracts is, is just the fact that we're so trusting um, as, a, as a community of people. And the contract isn't necessarily saying that there's distrust in between you and the person that you're contracting with, right? So I'm not saying if I create a contract with someone, I don't trust what you're saying that you're going to do for me, or neither is the person saying to me, I don't trust that you're doing what I, what you're saying you're going to do. It's just, it's not about you at all, really. It's you know, if you're con conducting a um, a business, you know, transaction, and that's what all of us are doing. You know, we're providing a good, we're providing a service. Every class you teach, every private that you do, every retreat that you go on, that someone signs up to join you with, you know, these are all business working agreements and. It's not to be taken personally. It doesn't mean that you don't trust the person, that they don't trust you. It's really something that just has to happen. So that trust factor can kind of make us feel shy about being comfortable with, with the contractual agreement itself. Um, and it's not about you. It's, it's just business and we want to do business. We want to do business the right way. We want to do business as yogis. Um, but it is so important that we have clear terms between the parties. So another common yogi pitfall that makes us uncomfortable when we're thinking about the concept of a contract is just fear around whether or not the opportunity will go away. As someone who spends, and my team spends, all day, every day negotiating, which is simply finding a solution between two parties. There's no right or no wrong. It's coming up with the happy medium that makes both of the parties feel like they're getting a fair deal. We know that it's okay to be clear on the terms of whatever it is that you're agreeing to get into. So it's okay to have a piece of paper that details exactly what it is that you're setting out to do. So that's that's a yogi pitfall that comes up a lot. It's, it's fear that you're going to lose the opportunity if you push back or if you ask for what it is that you really need. So we know that contracts are important. We've been working so hard over the years to bring more and more infrastructure to the yoga space. And I want to tell you a little bit about why the contracts are so important. Um, the first reason that contracts are so important is that things go wrong. And we see this, we send yoga teachers all around the world, planes, trains, automobiles, car rides. I mean, they might as well be in a horse-drawn buggy sometimes. I mean, we just send teachers everywhere, all around the country, and we send them on lots of different types of work as well as just the sort of logistical things. So we're dealing with television contracts and book deals and everything that you could think of. And the contract, 
matters because things go wrong. You know, whether it's a weather-related issue, you know, we've had flights canceled, we've had teachers that haven't been able to fulfill their end of the obligation, which is showing up to teach, sometimes because of things that are out of their control and sometimes because of things that are in their control. Either way, without a contract, without a stipulation that states what happens when something goes wrong, we don't know what to do. And you do not want to be in a situation when something goes wrong that you haven't thought about what happens if something goes wrong. And if you think about your day, I don't know where you guys are watching, but here in New York City, you know, we live in a really unpredictable environment. And, you know, you set your agenda out for the day and you've charted yourself and what is it that I'm gonna do and what is it that I'm gonna get done? And the minute you get on the subway, something goes wrong. And if you think about that and the unpredictability of life, I think that it should also be comforting as to you know, you being comfortable using a contract and having that really bind you and help you think about what if, what if what I'm saying I'm going to do for someone or what they're saying they're going to do for me doesn't come to fruition. A lot of folks are concerned with contracts because they feel like it's impersonal. You know, they feel like having a, a you know, a document that binds them to the studio and to the teaching gig that they're taking is going to make their relationship worse with their host and. I can assure you, my team can assure you that when something goes wrong, having a contract actually allows you to maintain the relationship. You can no longer make it, you know, well, I thought you were gonna do this. Well, how come you didn't do this? I thought you were gonna do that. When we've got a document that clearly states what we're supposed to be doing for one another, when something goes wrong, it makes it a lot easier to clean it up and to deal with it and to be able to maintain that personal relationship that you've worked so hard with. The C word is not so bad. The C word is a contract and it's going to become something that we will need more and more as our industry grows and develops and we sure hope that it doesn't slow down anytime soon because there are so many wonderful people that have yet to get the gifts of yoga. Thanks again. See you next time.